Okay, welcome to an, a special edition evening version of World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and with me today again is my special guest and guest and very close friend, David Beverly. Now the reason we're doing this is because David has run into something, another glitch in the matrix. He's found another evidence of a quantum effect, and this might signal something to us that something is really up. Of course, we know it's up. We know that the that the apocalypse is unfolding. That the that everything is happening, and uh, so he's got some information for us. I thought that we would bring him on tonight so that he could uh, enlighten us and, and tell us what he found. So welcome to the world beyond belief. Uh, Mr. David Beverly. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, to get together. I know, Paul, you're, you're not feeling perfect tonight, but uh, nonetheless, um, yeah, I contacted you about, um, I guess this last week, right, about uh, uh, symbolism on the American dollar, the U.S. dollar. And, and there's always been a, a lot of people that have, uh, you know, those conspiracy kooks that have talked about the Masonic imagery on, on, on the dollar. And I think, hopefully, I've got something up here on the screen I can put up. I'd like to show that what we're talking about, in case there might be some people actually that are out there that have never really seen much about this before. So let's see if we can share the screen real quick of course i gotta go through a gazillion okay you were saying not too many people are are noticing it or covering it so well, well that's the other thing too is that um one fella and i i did a piece last week let me share this let me share an application window um let's do this this thing is not co op. There we go. I'm going to share this. I did a piece. Can you guys see it? I can see it, yes. Okay. I did a piece um, about a week or so ago, I guess, called Othala on the Dala. And there was a fellow that uh, named Reality Shifter who, who had briefly mentioned it. You can see it's a one minute, 59 second piece. And he had noticed that the Anuit Coeptus, right, was um, the O and the E, so Anuit, A-N-N-U-I-T, Coeptus, C-O-E-P-T-I-S, which means favors our undertaking, right? Uh, and if you know anything about, about the symbolism on the dollar, let me see if I can check this out. Yeah, can you get it closer so we can see? Anyway, this fella here, Reality Shifter, and just put up a video saying that... Well, this is just repeating what I was saying. I got it maximized. Hang on. I want to show uh, show images, see if you guys can sh see this, share this screen instead. Uh, it says I'm sharing a screen. Let's see if we can do a different window. There we go. This will be better. Okay, you guys can see this, right? Can you see that? Well, it's hard to see the, uh, the O and the E together. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing. For a long time, people have talked about Novus Ordo Seclorum, the 13 uh, levels of the pyramid, uh, the all-seeing eye in the capstone, which they say is the eye of providence, you know, uh, and actually uh, the eye of Horus. <laughs> but uh, so Novus Ordo Seclorum uh, generally interprets, comes out to new world order or uh, the new order, right? Um, Anuit Coeptis, as it was always spelled, C-O-E-P-T-I-S, what it is now, um, 
means favors our undertaking. So basically the symbolism is generally speaking is the God favors our undertaking. And this was on the back of a dollar. Okay. Uh, if you've never noticed to take a look at pull any dollar out of, out of your pocket. Um, but this is a quantum effect and I really didn't feel it was a quantum effect entirely. I mean, it wasn't something that set with me, but that doesn't mean it's not true. Uh, but this fella had noticed that the O and the E oddly was together now. And he said, that's really weird. But he, he didn't go on any further than that. And as soon as I saw this, I simply Googled O and E put together. I mean, I literally just Googled that and it, and it came up and told me, uh, is this thing going to let me change gears here? Good, 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 good. So if I simply and E uh, push together, I think I put it in there. And yeah, here we go. See, look at that. Can you guys see this? What is OE called? Right? Okay. And this is saying it's Latin here. See, it's funny now I'm showing you guys, and it's last week it came up with Othala immediately. So it turned out it showed me that it was the, uh, the Odal rune that O and the E mashed together. Okay, and I went and I went to runesecrets.com and it told me it's called the Othala, what it means, and what it has to do with. Generally speaking, here it says Othala traces back to certain words in Anglo Saxon and Norse. It means noble or nobility, associatively linked to property, estate, homeland, yada, yada, yada. But as we go along, it talks about ancestral spirit, spiritual inheritance. And it's really interesting. Uh, if, if you don't know what a rune is, like a peace sign is, is a death rune. Um, so, uh, Paul, you might probably know something about runes, right? Well, we were, we were looking at you, um, uh, John D. John D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that he worked with rune symbolism. Rune symbolism comes from uh, ancient Norse gods. I think yeah. uh, I can't remember, but that's I think that's the origin of it. Yes. Uh, so it's so it's an ancient, uh, probably uh, I don't know, Luciferian-based kind of thing. Although, you know, uh, John D channeled uh, the language of Enoch, which and there's supposedly two Enochs, a good one and a bad one. I mean, there's good angels and bad angels. I would imagine that the Enochian language is the language of angels. So this could be some kind of hidden secret. Uh, uh code or language right uh, well this is this is if you understand the times that we're in and uh, you know if you know me i i mine begins i look through it with a biblical lens right so this thing goes on to say that uh the othala contains the potential power of all the other runes the main energy involved in this is the ancestral spiritual power, which connects us to our genetic wisdom, which that's really interesting. As soon as I heard that, the unconscious and sometimes awakened unity that links us back to the first humans who began to think and seek something greater than a simple animal existence. Right. The one way in which Othala unites all of mankind throughout time. Okay, that really got what? Let me interject something. For anybody that's not aware of it, if you pull out, it's an enchanted piece of paper because it's, it's filled with symbols. And I wouldn't doubt that somewhere in the mint, there's some ritual that's connected with endowing these, these, these um, talismen yes. with their power. And that's probably why it's been, well, one, you know, there's, there's reason it's been the 
it's, it was based in gold, now it's based in oil and none, none, none. But then the spiritual end of it, it's always been a talisman. Yes. When you spend the dollar, you're, uh, you're speaking the language of, uh, of this uh, spiritual connection. Well, if if you understand our how our American money works, it's 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 not really money. It's it it has it has no intrinsic value whatsoever. It's it's in, in endued with with value because we, we we'll take it for an exchange. But it has it's it's absolutely worthless. Uh, it's not backed by gold if people out there still believe that there's some gold hidden somewhere back in those dollars. That's, that is a fallacy that you need to, to educate yourself beyond. Um, but, but so in that respect, in a sense, it has spiritual power in that respect that people will take this worthless thing in exchange for their labors, for their goods. Uh, part of it also, though, is that we use our military to force that value, right? If you know, if anybody understands that a dollar is the world's exchange currency, right? Right. Most people, I hope, understand that, you know. And so, we have propped up the dollar by our military might by forcing people to use the dollar to buy oil. If you want to buy oil, you gotta buy it with a dollar. Well, I'm not from the United States. I'm from Ecuador. What do I do? What's y'all's money called down there? What's Ecuadorian money? It's called U.S. dollar. <laughs> Imagine that. So anyway, <laughs> but 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 uh, you know. So you, but if you're in a nation that has its own currency, and you want to buy oil, or even sell oil. It's exchanged for dollars. So you've got to get some dollars somehow to do that transaction. Well, and here's the thing. Anytime somebody has tried to think otherwise and sell for, for real money like gold exchange or something like that, we send our Marines in and they, they, they have weapons of mass destruction. That's a buzzword for they're going to destroy the dollar. <laughs> uh, example is Libya. That's right. That's right. Minutes, uh, yeah. but, 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 but this isn't, although I love this subject because so many people do not understand this. Uh, this wasn't the purpose of this discussion. Um, maybe it should be one day because <laughs> a lot of people probably don't understand what money really is today. But, but anyway, about the Othala, the point of it is, is that, uh, again, from a biblical perspective, in the garden, the first man and woman was deceived by the serpent, okay? And, and as we go along, Satan, um, the fallen angels, the watchers, corrupted the seed of man, okay? And that's where we get the flood. And again, I'm nutshelling this whole thing. If you listen to our old discussions, you'll get more of that. But Today, Jesus had said that as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be when the Son of Man returns. Now, we, most of us, can tell that something is up in the world. Things are not right. Even if you're not a Christian, you know things are screwed up. Okay? So, more than screwed up. But as a Christian, we call it the end times. <laughs> and uh, so, we're in the end times, uh, uh, knee deep in it. And all of a sudden, this quantum effect change, some people call it Mandela effect, but the quantum effect change occurs on the dollar. Now, now here's the thing. The Inuit Coeptus now has this Othala symbolism, and, and I've, I'm not going to try and share the screen and show it because the audio is not working out, but maybe we'll put links at the bottom of this video that people can go to. I'll send you guys that there are people in the past, because I, I researched this pretty heavily for the past couple of weeks that I've known about it, and when you look at other people who talked about the symbolisms on the, on the dollar bill, if Anuit Coeptus had the Othala symbolism in it, the rune, they would have spoken of that. They would have mentioned it in their presentation. 
they, they go all about, about, you know, a new coeptus and favors and, and an eye of Horus and, and the 13 layers. And they go all about that, never mentioning the rune. Okay. So that tells me that it wasn't there, but I still don't have proof that it wasn't there. Okay. So, <laughs> so lo and behold, uh, somebody else, a, a wonderful lady, a wonderful Christian lady, and she asked that I don't use her name. And that's, that's fine. I uh, wanted to give her credit, uh, but she just, she caught my video and she was watching, uh, she has Dish Network uh, satellite service. And they uh, had recorded on their DVR a show by the History Channel called Secrets of the Founding Fathers. Okay. And um, again, since the audio is so bad, I'm probably not going to play the video, but I can show the screenshot. She sent me an email and said, Hey, you're not going to believe this, but on the intro to the show, I found this. Let me show you this. It's amazing. So let me share the screen, if it'll allow me to. Come on now. Screen share. There we go. Sweet. Can you guys see that? Yeah. That's a shot. You can see there's the History Channel logo, right? Okay. And knew it, Coeptus. We call this residue, right? Isn't that when we have a quantum effect and then all of a sudden? That's why, I, yeah, I call it residue because it makes it sound like it's it's insignificant scraps or something, residue. But you can find residue on all the quantum effect things. That, if that's sure. correct, yes. So you can see that that the O and the E from the, the symbol on that program is not together, right? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Okay. So I was, um, let me see if I can get this to stop sharing now. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, stop sharing. Cancel it. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You're coming through loud and clear. I think this is important. Now, why it's important, uh, we're going to have to just watch things unfold. But yes. I think it's significant. Why would they change that? I mean, they'd have to retool that whole uh, plate, I suppose. Well, and well, the thing is that keep in mind, and we didn't state this because I'm stupid this way. I make assumptions. This change occurred while the dollar was sitting in my pocket. So this change wasn't a reprint of the American dollar. This change was a quantum effect. And so yeah, that right, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no, I I know, but but a lot of people out there might might have just thought like you were thinking is, wait a minute, did they just reprint the dollar and now they change this? No, no. Yes, the symbolism is added, right? Enhanced, <laughs> satanically enhanced. But it, it, it first of all, it changes even the meaning of the whole statement, right? And, and quite frankly, in my opinion, it's as if the demonic is, is heralding their, their appearance. Their, their, it still says favors our undertaking, but now there's an additional statement to what they're favoring. And that is the genetic Luciferian ideal of our genetic inheritance. Because back to what I started to say a moment ago was about how Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be when the Son of Man returns. So what happens is in the days of Noah, all flesh was corrupt. This is in Genesis 6. So all flesh, how much is all? All, all flesh. And if you read the extra biblical text, it basically says is that they taught man how to mingle animals with animals, and they were mingling men with animals to provoke God, to tick God off. Okay. So this is in the book of Jasher and Enoch and uh, those extra biblical texts. So now we have a time where 
if, if, if you pay any attention to the news, I write that technology column, Jesus Freak Computer Geek, right? And I just wrote how Elon Musk is talking about that the only way people are going to be able to compete with modern industry, artificial intelligence, and robotics is that you take a chip, that you get enhanced, or you won't be able to be employed. Okay? This is another modern day repackaging of the corruption of the flesh. Okay? And they're announcing it because the way it works, there's actual rules that they play by. And one of those is that they, it's an aspect of magic or Wicca. It's, they tell you what they're going to do. If you don't refute it, you accept it. If you don't rebuke it, if you say nothing, it's okay. You've accepted it. And so they tell you ahead of time or during what they're doing. Um, also, there's another scriptural reference where God says that he will do nothing without first telling his servants the prophets. Well, since Satan wants to be like the Most High, he tells his servants and they announce what he's doing. Okay. These, these are the this, is called, this is called tacit compliance. Thank you. When you don't say anything, it, it, it's assumed that you're accepting it. It's like, uh, that's why, you know, things like vaccines, we, <laughs> we have to really stand up and push back on that because if you don't, you're complying and you're allowing them to inject you with things like mercury and antifreeze and unborn baby parts and all kind of stuff. But anyway, I digress. No, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's our lot currently. It's ridiculous, really. Um, while we're on that subject that you're digressing about, since, since we're here, just real quick, have you heard that they announced that they're going to put up a particulate shield to block out the sun? No, that one, that one escaped me. It's, it's announced. So, you know, they've been doing it for 10, 15 years, but now they actually announced it for 2017 and starting in April, they're going to start a shield, a solar shield in the upper atmosphere. They're telling us now. Now, I, it eludes me who it was that, uh, that said it. It was a reputable, let there be light. It was a reputable, um, uh, group uh, like some major hospital or, or university organization. Um, so it wasn't just some, you know, YouTube conspiracy guy. You know, it was, it was the science community who was doing the job announcing that they're doing this. And um, that's a whole other subject. But nonetheless, like you said, tacit compliance, right? How many people have denied thought you were crazy if you said they're painting lines in the sky every day and they don't, Paul, they don't even look up, right? You're just crazy. And what it's got earned us now is that now it's going to be, how much, oh, it was Richie from Boston. A guy named Richie from Boston has a great YouTube channel. That's the one who turned me on to this latest news. If you visit Richie from Boston and you'll see his piece on that, uh, I love his attitude because the guy, he doesn't take any crap. <laughs> right. And, uh, Isn't he the one that used to work for Alex Jones? And during the Boston bombing, he walked up and uh, the FBI was saying, only consider these pictures of the bombing, you know, false flag that happened. He says, well, no, well, what about this? Well, what about that? And he caused the FBI to shut down their, their um, talk to the public. But, you know, it was the Alex Jones channel, so you don't, you know, what's going on with Alex Jones. But uh, is that the same guy, same Richie from Boston? I think it is. Uh, you may be right. I, I, I haven't heard that. Uh, I think he was more involved in the mainstream now, you know, not to disparage Alex Jones, but um, I used to listen to Alex Jones. What's that? I can't hear you. You're, you're... What happened then? We have, we unmute? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Okay, we're back. Oh, I'll disparage him all day. 
he yeah. conflates. Hey, well, right, that's a bad word. He mixes up false flag, obviously through false flags, with with real Muslim attacks. So it gives us the impression that Muslims are around every corner and under every rock. Yeah, well, he's an He's he's a guy that wants to instigate riots and and get people's blood pressure to rise. And and so I was trying to be gracious because the reality is is that. Um, he's full of crap. I mean, it's well, I mean yeah, yeah, he's full of crap. He, yeah. he, he, he drank the, the Trump Kool-Aid and now he gets to, to send his, I mean, the whole Trump, uh, the Trump puppetry yeah. is, is really, really screwing everything up. It's going to uh, contribute greatly to this big May 1st purple revolution that's going to happen orchestrated by Soros. But he's the other half of the revolution. Yeah. And then lately, he's come out with Pizzagate. Now, there's so much evidence on Pizzagate. If you go to our channel, PlanconUtopia.wordpress.com, we posted a lot of stuff on Pizzagate. And there, we posted a, oh, it must be a 20-page long document that relates it to everybody and the Pope. And I mean, there's so much evidence. The fact that there aren't arrests or investigation. It's amazing. So he comes out and apologizes to Alephantis. Now, if there's a psychopath on the earth, so, so I, you know, I, I'm not as shy as you. Uh, he's no, 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 no. I'm not being shy. I'm just trying to be gracious, but no. I, I'm in touch. He's a bullshit artist, but he's yeah. a supreme bullshit artist. He's I wonder, though, and this right. is something I talked about with another fella. Who has a channel? Yeah, who has a channel called "The Truth Is Stranger Than Fiction," and and uh, that kind of leads into why I contacted you guys earlier today. Uh, another guy who's very clear-minded. The guy is just utterly brilliant, Paul. He's just his stuff is is so concise and just man, I, I'm gushing over it. But anyway, he's a uh, he did a piece on black goo uh and it just came out like yesterday or whatever and talking about uh, so when i saw it he started talking about uh, alchemy and the golem okay and if people don't know what the golem is uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna try and summarize this is is in in kabbalah or in ancient mysticism uh, they would make a clay man. They would in, endue him with with life, but he was he, he would just do their bidding. He's kind of like the basis for the idea of the Frankenstein monster. You know, it's kind of like a golem, uh, a fully realized kind of thing. So, as far it's, as it's I, like, like an ancient biblical monster, sort of, yeah. But uh, he, he has a he's alive, but but he's like the living dead. You know, um, okay. Is this a soul, like a soulless creature, uh, like yeah, a zombie? demonic? Like a yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and so, uh, and he is a soulless creature. But what happens in a soulless creature, in a soul, is something that comes from God. So if it's a life that's created demonically, a demon moves in. So it's soulless, but you got this spirit of uh, a disembodied demon. You know. So um, anyway, when he started talking about it, it started to click with me about this Othala thing. Um, just really nailed me. Um, and I haven't fully fleshed this out. <laughs> Pun maybe intended. Uh, is, is, and I called you, you, were, you, were, you weren't available at the moment, but um, okay. There is some activity on the web. It's it could be just a bunch of s silly people making stuff up, but nonetheless, they are doing modern alchemy, and they're taking their own semen and injecting it scientifically into an egg. They'll take a chicken egg and they'll empty the um, they'll leave every they'll empty it out, but the yolk right they'll throw a small hole and they'll insert their semen and they'll seal it up with a with a uh, with a, like a clay they'll wrap it up so it's kept in the dark which is part of this alchemic process and then they'll put it away for 10 days 
and bring it out and a creature has grown okay this kind of scary bug looking creature <laughs> okay now it's on video and it could just be a big farce and it wasn't done on april fool's day it's been i've seen it for the past week or so okay um but the procedure that they're using uh, oh lord watch i don't have it in front of me now is um i don't have it in front of me homunculus this is probably done by a uh, federal grant this is your taxpayer dollars at work <laughs> we're injecting semen <laughs> chicken eggs to see what happens and uh, if it's alchemical it's not scientific it's it's, it's here here's, now, here's what uh, go ahead no, that, I'm sorry. It's 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 a uh, a fella para, Paracelsi Paracelsi Paracelsi. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know of Gans Shamira. He's got eight uh, um, face like the sun. Uh, a YouTube channel. He had a series of DVDs he did called Age of Deceit, and uh, in it, and, and actually. Um, the truth is stranger than fiction used some of Gonz's material as inserts in his and um, here's how it's described <laughs> this is beautiful I think this is I think this is just great because this is you know we've come to the we've come to the point in history of what I call the logical absurdity and this yeah. is a real, uh, this is a real example of that so well, a lot of people think there's no way this is going on but even Christians who say they believe in spiritual things, um, can you see that? You can see that, right? Can you see? Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. So, see what it says. It says, "But neither must we, by any means, forget the generation of homunculi." how we generate create for there is some truth in this thing although for a long time it was held in a most occult manner and with secrecy while there was no little doubt in question among some of the old philosophers whether it was possible to nature and art that a man should be begotten without the female body and the natural womb in order to accomplish it you must proceed thus let the semen of a man putrefy by itself in a sealed concur concubite which the egg is the manner of concubite that they use okay and then with the highest putref putrefication until it begins to live move and be agitated which can easily be seen if now after this it be every day nourished and fed cautiously and prudently with it arcanum of human blood and kept for 40 weeks in the perpetual and equal heat anyway it goes on from there and um i have can you still see this screen i changed it to a different yeah, screen. Well, i'm still with you this is very interesting okay so here this is what these guys are doing i you know look these guys i'm not playing a video but you can see how right what they're doing um trying to get oh there he goes inserting his own semen into the egg um, and he's using a hypodermic yeah well he's got to make it as medicinal as possible right so then some time goes by and uh he pulls this now look again look this thing i think this is the one that looks like a a, a, a crab i think Is this the one? Okay. You can see this, right? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. So you guys can see that, right? Exactly, yes. Okay, now look. I, look, I know there's a bunch of crap on YouTube. I mean, I'm not so naive to think, oh, everything you see on YouTube is real. No, come on now. But the, but the fact is, okay, we're back, right? Okay. The fact is, it's not just this guy and his piece. There's a whole bunch of other people, and they're using the, they're going by the procedure that the, the fellow I just mentioned, per, whatever the heck his name is, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Paracelsi, 
uh, mentions. Okay, and so they're using what they read in the Alchemist's Handbook, and according to them, they're following this procedure. Now, whether it's real or not, I, whatever. But I've not seen this kind of stuff before, and it, it doesn't surprise me in this age where you literally can sequence your own custom genome, send it off to a company, and have it grown and tested to see if it's a viable entity. Okay? I, th I think that we really need to, to ground this thing. We're living in a time of clones, where people can be cloned. Their clones can be grown somewhere off where if they need body parts, they can get it. The stuff that we're, that's kind of breaking through to us is uh, probably 20, 30 years behind the times. Uh, <clears throat> and those things are happening. Uh, the, when they cracked the genome, it's, uh, it really unleashed anything in terms of that. Also, I want to tell people that they're using alchemical processes, which is different than the scientific method. The scientific method, the way that works is you do something, and if, it, and if you can repeat it, it's scientifically provable. Um, well, I, I can't actually, right now. if I can but interject. It, yeah, go ahead. They're actually, they're, when these guys do these experiments with this homunculus, they're actually using the site. They're calling it the scientific method. They're repeating efforts. I got one guy I didn't show here where he was, he had test samples and control groups of eggs just to see if it, if it putrefied differently. So he's using scientific methodology. But if you go back and this is something we, we probably don't have time to get into it, but, the scientific method actually stems from those who practiced alchemical practices. And so well, it was. Yeah, yeah, you can go back to, uh, what's his name? The guy that invented the scientific method. Uh, Francis Bacon. The, the guy that gravity, the same guy that invented gravity. Well, I mean, uh, Newton came up with. Yeah, Newton. But, so, but, but he, he was the dark, he was the dark with, occultist. I thought it was, I know he was an occultist, but I thought it was Francis Bacon that came up with the idea of the, the empirical ideal of, of you know, science was. An occultist also. An occultist also. Here's, yeah, what they, an occultist. here's what they did. Here's what I think they did, David. Though. What they did was they wanted, uh, see, alchemy goes way beyond the scientific method because they call in spirits and they do rituals which aren't all the time replicable. They don't want us doing that. Right. So they tamed us yes. to the scientific method. Yes. But, but when, you're, when you're dealing with alchemy, you, you can call in yeah. a, uh, a demonic keep in mind, spirit. Keep, keep in mind, the modern physics, theoretical physics of CERN, quantum effect, D-wave, they are actually calling in the spiritual. So the science, if you could call it that, the scientific method has gone from alchemical, spiritual, demonism, uh, divination, gone through, they repackaged it and said, hey, this is modern man's science. And now they've gone full through and now it's actually spiritualism. So most of the technology that you see today is technology that's from the fallen angels. Most of the, the really high order stuff, stuff like CERN that's playing on my screen right now. Um, oh, I think, you're, I think you're exactly right. Yeah. And, but if you go through and you, and you do a, a like I've got, a, I've got a, a niece that's done a, 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 a degree in microbiology. Uh, she, I don't think in her courses she learns to call in spirits or Oh, or yeah. do spirit cooking or I'm anything. I'm talking about the high order stuff, the stuff. Yeah, I'm talking about CERN and, yeah, and I'm not talking kind. about the, a kid from my church who's going to university to get a genetics uh, degree. No, she doesn't know anything about. I I'll mention it to her, but she thinks I'm crazy. You know. Uh, 
I'm, I'm the crazy guy at church. So, uh, hey, look, so just to wrap this thing up is, is for people to do a little of their own research on Othala, to look at their dollar bill, see how it's changed, to understand the times that we're in. Okay, look, if you're not a Christian, that's okay. Uh, just understand, Christ said that this would be the greatest tribulation ever, ever will be, ever has been. There is no time like this. And so we're seeing stuff that we've never seen, never, ever. No one has ever seen it. And so we need to be vigilant. We, we, we need to think for ourselves. We, we need to question everything, but not in a belligerent manner, but to not just take in because, you know, my teacher told me or that smart guy told me. No, no. And so um, we, we need to truly think for ourselves. And I'll just wrap it. It's, it's going to be more and more difficult to think for yourselves because everything we eat, drink, and breathe is attacking our physical being, our minds. Okay? Inform yourself. So there are some ways that you can combat and go against what they're trying to do to us to turn off our minds, to turn off our ability to, to be clear minded. There are some things out there. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to tell people about this, this quantum change, this quantum effect change on the dollar, and that there's now a rune on the dollar that was not there before. Okay? Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, do you want to leave people with your uh, contact information? Your uh... Oh, yeah. Well, uh, of course, my email is jesusfreakcomputergeek at gmail.com. So jesusfreak. Spelled proper, all one word, and computer geek, which is double E, right? Uh, freak is F R E A, and geek is G double E K. So, anyway, Jesus Freak Computer Geek at gmail.com. Of course, I've got a YouTube channel too, at Jesus Freak. It's youtube.com slash Jesus Freak Computer Geek. And um, anyway, and uh, I would highly recommend that uh, if you haven't checked out the people that I mentioned in this podcast that you check out their stuff too that uh, they're you'll you'll really be well informed of course paul and Mindy, you guys are always nailing it too there's, there's so much good resources out there you know okay thank you very much david this has really been informative someday i'd like to drill down into uh into uh, what you know about what's unfolding and but this is these are key pieces this rune on the on the talisman, it's got a new rune. So apparently we're entering a new stage yes. of, of this uh, uh, tribulation. I think it's a tribulation, but uh, thank you very much, David. This has been a pleasure for me and a whole lot of fun. I hope it's been fun for people watching. That's right. God bless you guys. Take care.